Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling a Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're happy to announce ZimCat02. So ZimCat01 uh, was the last version, and ZimCat00 was the first version of Cat. So we're on our third version of Cat, ZimCat02. So ZimJS.com. Come on in, press on the cat, and you can see what's oh, what's new. Slide on over. We've got this book, and we're going to take a look at that in a future bubbling. How exciting. We've got uh, label letters doing HTML type text, and we're going to see that in a future bubbling. <laughs> How exciting. We also have announced, officially announced, the, the Zim dev site and the Zim Lab. So I believe we went through some uh, some videos on the lab and on the dev site already. And what I'd like to do now though is take a look in the docs here and then under updates right here. So in this bubbling we're going to take a look at all of the changes that are not the book and that are not the label letters to make sure that we got them all. And that starts with a change called CHOP. So uh, let's have a look at that. We'll reduce this down and take a look at CHOP. So this is the code for one of the CHOP examples. And CHOP came, uh, we came across CHOP or wanting to use CHOP when we were making the scrambler. So in making the scrambler, we chop up a picture into uh, different pictures to multiple pictures and we put them into the scrambler and scramble them around and that bit of code uh, when we created that code it's you know 10 lines or so of looping through double looping and um, using cache canvases of bitmaps and stuff so it was sort of like a little gnarly looking and we always thought hey maybe we should do that for you I'll, I'll allow us to chop something up and so here it is yay uh, basically, chop will return either uh, a tile, by default it will return a tile, or an array of bitmaps if you really only want the array of bitmaps. But tile is what it can be used for a scrambler. So this makes scrambler really easy. It's a new scrambler, chop this bitmap, and how many calls and how many rows you want. Isn't that neat? Like one line, one line of code, and you've got a puzzle, basically. Uh, here we're using it more generically. We're making a big circle as a background and we're going to chop a this circle, this red circle, up into 20 pixel or 20 pieces by 20 pieces. So big pixels, I guess you can call them. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, 20 uh, columns, 20 rows. And then we're centering it. We're also setting a no mouse on that. We don't need to interact with each of those. And if you don't need to interact with them, then probably set a no mouse on them. The more of these you get around, you got to refresh them every time the, the page refresh or the screen refreshes, not the page refresh. Every time the screen refreshes, which can be quite often, uh, you'll, you'll have to redraw them. And then we've chopped another circle as well, a circle that's a little bit smaller, that's black into, again, 2020. And we are animating those with a sequence. So we're, we're sequence animating these, each of them. And let's have a look and see what this gives us. Open in browser, boom, boom, boom. Oh, here it is. There it is. Ooh, so we've chopped those things up. And now we're busy animating them all in a sequence. Let me get this strange looking disco ball. Nice, huh? So that is chop. You can also see chop back on the Zim site. We've now made this version of, um, of the scrambler in here. Scrambler. Ooh, we're really racking up the new things in ZimCat, aren't we? There, right here. So here's the scrambler. Scrambler now uses chalk, uh, chop, <laughs> chalk. So if we view the source in here, scroll on down. Uh, I think it does. Anyway, yes, here it is right here. So uh, var picture is equal to a new scrambler. Chop the image up, the three by three, and center it. And when the picture is complete, we're we're spinning it. And then there's another scrambler on the right hand side that uh, we didn't use chop on. So isn't that cool? This right here is just one line to make that whole scrambler going on. 
He used to be a series. Well, we could go look at it. You want to see that? So if we go to the docs here and type in chop, like so, we can see what's inside chop by going here and hitting view. And so here it is. It was that double loop. We'd set up an array for ourselves. We'd loop through the rows and the columns. And each time we would be making a new bitmap from the portion of the bitmap that we want. So a width and height based on the width and height uh, at, at locations and stuff like that. Anyway, so that's what we did there. And then if it's a tile, which is the default true, is a tile, then we'll return a new tile of the pieces in the calls and rows, uh, like so. All right. So that's chop. What else did we have in the updates to alpha? So we have a series of them now. We've got uh, two color. So if we want to change blue, is that okay? If we want to have a blue head towards a red color, purpley, I guess, by 0.2, then we can say to color. There's also lighten and darkens, and with the request that we had, we, we made lighten and darken work with negative numbers too. So actually, if you lighten negative 0.3, it will be the same as darken 0.3. And that allows you to animate right across a whole scale of from light to dark if, if you need to with this lighten. And there's darken as well, works in that way. And now we have the two alpha. These can be put right on the colors. So this makes an alpha down, half alpha down blue. And this color is a zim color, but it can actually be put right on a quote. So if you put quote blue dot two alpha, that would also work. That turns a, uh, an HTML blue color into a 0.5. And same with any hex numbers as well. You can dot two alpha hex numbers in the same way. Those would be quote some hex number dot two alpha. So we've adjusted the string to accommodate these methods. Okay, that's two alpha. Yeah, very handy. Instead of using RGBA. So you could always say quote RGBA, but uh, to do that with a zim color, you've got to then pass it through some color, uh, like color, convert color method that we have. Basically, all of these are just running convert colors in certain ways in behind the scene. It's an extra line of code just to run a, uh, just to run that, but this makes it more convenient to apply them. All right. Sure. What else do we have? Ah, the multi-asset format. So this is cool, again, from a request, and I'm going to copy this right here. Warp and paste it into our atom so that we can have a colored syntax look at it. If you had some assets, like var assets is equal to, boop, here they are. And maybe what we can do is drop them down so we can have a look. So assets traditionally have had one path available. You have comma assets, comma path available there. And for a long time, we've been using the assets folder for that because it's a generic word. It's generic enough that we can put both sounds and images in there. So we put all of our sounds and images in here, and then uh, we call the path for that, and that would be assets. And that way, we get to call all of our sounds and images just by their name. The path is taken care of. Well, some people want to keep their images in an images folder and their sounds in a sounds folder at which point they're kind of out of luck with this. They would they would probably bring in one of them here and then use load assets to load them in from another path. Or uh, they were making do with putting things like images one, images two, like, well, this would be up in here. So we could then put all of the things together and basically we have no path. So all, all our assets are, um, is something like that, right, where we say assets is images one, images two, oh, and this would be sounds, like that. Uh, then down below, you'd have to say asset images one, asset sounds one. So that's another way that we could have held them all in different directories, but it means that you've got a longer, a longer, longer typing to do. So if we undo this, we now have uh, a way to handle assets. Oops, can we do that? We have a way to handle assets in different paths. 
uh, like so. So here we would put assets and not bother with the path because what we've done is we've broken it up. If you have a set of assets as an array all inside of images and then a, a different set of assets inside of sounds, then you can pass it in like so and handle it with just one dot png this down below you would say asset oof dot mp3 dot play and you still just use that you wouldn't have to include the path so this obviously handles multiple paths loading what we're doing in behind is just doing kind of the same stuff we're just adding that to that and making the id uh, match up and stuff like that. so anyway you don't need to worry about that you would pass in the assets like that with the path individually Yay! Better undo all this though. Oop. Clunk, clunk. And let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, further, so there's more properties that you can add in there too. Load timeout, max num, no cores. Those are all pretty neat. So have a look under under the frame.assets. By the way, remember in docs we now. Uh, we'll go up to the top here. In docs, it's not all under the frame. We talk about images here as well. So images isn't really, it's not really a class that we can use, nor is sounds a class we can use, but because they're so important, they're all being loaded through the frame, but because they're important, we broke them out into little details on their own so that we can talk about those specific things. Okay. Oh, where were we? Sure, updates going forward, I guess. And we were back here. Oh, <laughs> just, just did the same thing. Documents, updates. Okay, we were looking at updates. Um, updated frame and load assets, max connections to 10. So thanks, Disco, for finding this. CreateJS had a way to load more assets uh, in parallel. So instead of loading one asset, then another asset, then another asset, some browsers, as a matter of fact, most browsers these days can load sort of multi-load things. And that, that makes for faster loading. Well, <laughs> it was defaulting to just load one thing at a time. So we've now made, as far as we can tell, most browsers have this. We may as well allow that maximum connections to 10. So this should make for faster loading of assets in general. You can, if that's causing any problems, I don't know why it would, you can drop that back to one at a time if you really need to. We've, uh, okay, probably don't need to read. Some of these general ones are just sort of fixes on things. Adjusted hit test to only show up once in distill. Don't worry about that. Distill keeps track of how many times when you set distilled to true to so to minify your code to only use the code that we're using you can set distilled to true and run it and then it will record how many times functions are run well hit tests are often done in loops and often that means you you we've recorded uh hit test uh you know a hundred times in the data that you're copying over into distill so we've just gone in and made sure that we only record those once a new problem, uh, removed all references to press down. Ah, oh, we really wanted to press down because we've got a press up and a press move. So press move and press up are there, but then a mouse down, right? Mouse down, press move, press up. <laughs> It'd be nice to have a press down that was really just a mouse down. But when we did that, we couldn't figure out a way to make the right event object. Um, you can't pass in and you can't pass an event object quite in the same way as expected. So it sort of failed. So unfortunately at the moment, we don't know how to do that. We've just removed any references to press down. It's too bad. We've added expand, expand vertical, expand bar, and expand bar vertical parameters to the uh, slider. So that's at the end of the slider. We had put in a default expand, but sometimes those slider buttons get in the way of each other if their sliders are close. So we've uh, provided a way to specifically say what, how much we want to expand them on which parts as well. And expand really helps in mobile, especially on like little small buttons like a slider thing. So you definitely want to use it, but if you're having problems, if the sliders are too close together and you're, you know, you think you're working one slider and yet it seems to be working the wrong one, 
then you might have to decrease some of the expands on there. Uh, the sprite was giving us problems when no path was provided. Uh, I thought it was with a path, but anyway, it, it, we've fixed up that. Don't worry about it. It's uh, adjusted text area to read only, spell check, and placeholder. Okay, so we can now style the text areas read only, spell check, and placeholders. Those are like linking through to HTML features. So we, we had had them in Zim style, but now you can style those. So to say, hey, if you if you don't want spell check on all of your late uh, all of your text areas that you're providing, you could just say text area colon spell check colon false, and then you're um, you're good to go. We reorganize the frame assets to be global. Oh yeah, we didn't realize this, but if you had multiple frames, then with the as we made this global asset so that we don't have to always say frame dot asset frame dot asset. But what was happening is multiple frames were wiping out the other frames assets inside of the global assets. So you couldn't have multiple frames and use asset on assets in all of those frames. It would be only the latest frames assets that would be in there. You could always go back to specific frame.assets and it worked. But uh, so that was a tricky, tricky one. We just didn't realize that it was doing it before. And so we've made that so now that won't happen. Uh, the global assets hold all of the all of the assets and you can use them whenever you need to. It just does mean that if you load the same named asset in, but I, I, I didn't really see any problem with that. So what if it overwrites the same asset? That's It's the same asset, so <laughs> what difference does it make? Uh, so I think we're good there. Made stepper default to list instead of number if an array is passed in. So a little while back, we changed the stepper to be defaulted to number, uh, as in it goes up and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, but then if you passed in a list, it was still defaulted to a number, the, the way numbers work. Uh, and you would have to set the stepper type to be list. Well, why? <laughs> so we made it automatically if you pass in a list of something other uh, other than a number, or uh, and you're not using min and max as numbers, then um, it defaults to a list rather than numbers. I think that's good. And we added percent and percent close properties to circle. So that means we can animate that now. And I tried that. That was fun. Uh, um, so percent and percent close percent is how much of the circle to see and percent close is as to whether you want the border to close on the bottom there sometimes it can be just a semicircle so basically with uh, percent close false you can make a semicircle border without it closing to uh, so you can make an arc i guess um well those were not properties, they were only passed in as parameters. And so that means you couldn't animate that, for instance. Well, now you can animate percent pretty well is what you'd be animating there to make a circle sort of uh, get smaller and, you know, whatever. So that's fun. You should try that out yourself. It's cool. Recent patches, style uh, function. Oh yeah, added the cache. So if you are working on the GPU, then you'll want to cache your labels, otherwise you won't see them. So stage GL is a way that you can uh, boost performance by working in the GPU, in theory anyway, uh, and also in practice. I'm sure that that's been done, but it's a pain in the neck sometimes because you got to make sure everything's cached. So if you make a, a certain new circle, you got to cache that circle. Um, and if you make labels, you've got a cache label. So now there's a style called cache. And if you just say uh, style equals squiggly brackets right here, cache equals true, then every object that gets made will be cached. You may want that or you may not. But if you're on the GPU, that could be handy for you. I think that would uh, work on GPU quite well. And remember, if you do GPU, then in one frame, you could also have another frame on top that is your interface that is not GPU. So dials and sliders don't really work well cached because every time you change it, you got to update the cache. So it's, it doesn't really make sense to do dials and sliders and interface that, that are changing um, cached. 
So that means you would have one frame in behind its GPU, where all the stuff is cached like this, but then when you make your components up top, you would clear your style and don't cache your components. And then the components are updating only the components and not everything. Whereas in the frame underneath, you're in the GPU, and so the updating is really fast that way. And um, there you go, You've got the best of both worlds. Um, we've officially announced the dev site here and the lab, as mentioned, but I think we've done videos on that. We also held a Zim Zoom, so if you want, come on into Slack, uh, zimjs.com slash Slack. If you want to hang with us, we have a good, good bunch of folks from around the world, and we would love to see you there. Certainly, if you're using Zim, you should definitely be here, and you should definitely be using Zim. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, if you're here listening to this, um, these are some of the smaller updates that we've been doing in ZimCat02. And uh, then we're going through our updates. So GitHub and Distill, well, Distill, of course, Node Package Manager has been updated, TypeScript's been updated, etc., and the templates. And we're currently doing the bubbling videos. So after we do the bubbling videos here, we'll move that up into being updated. And we'll get to the blog and Patreon. Patreons, where you can donate if you've been using Zim for your company and stuff like that. If you are a student, you know, or, or don't have much money, don't worry about it at all. You don't need to donate or even be feel guilty. It's We built Zim so that you guys can be creative, and that, that warms our hearts. So uh, come on in to Zim Slack and be there with us, and that's certainly payment enough. Um, if you are using it for a company and do do have some cash and stuff like that, then of course that helps. We'll put that into marketing of Zim and uh, that kind of stuff, paying for servers, <laughs> this and that. Uh, we're certainly not getting rich from it, nor do we expect to. Okay, all the best. And that has been a bubbling. Come on back for uh, another bubbling when we take a look at label letters and the book that are new in Zim Cat 2. Ciao, and have a great day or night. I am Dr. Abstract.